Oh, we're working out. Oh. Hello guys, happy Monday. Is this gonna be upside down? I hope everybody can see right side up. I'm not too sure. Today's a really exciting project. I'm gonna jump right into it. Number one, you get, well, you get a two for one today. I'm gonna to show you how to make a DIY cloche. I hope I'm saying that right. And then I'm gonna show you, which the cloche you can reuse for any kind of home decor. You don't have to do the Halloween aspect of it. I'm gonna show you a second DIY to kind of add a Halloween touch to it. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek, even though I know I'm not supposed to. I'm gonna be teaching you this guy. This is one DIY I'm about to teach you. And then you got the cloche down here. I'm gonna teach you that right now. So we'll take this to the side, and now we're gonna actually make the cloche. So for this, all you're gonna need is like a little circular round piece of wood. I got this from Michaels, and then I stained it. You can keep it the natural wood, or you can paint it, or do whatever kind of embellishment. I just thought the deeper wood was like a little bit spookier. And for the glass, you're gonna need this soda bottle. <coughs> Pardon me. You're gonna need this soda bottle, which I just picked up at the dollar store. Um, I actually can run in and get the canola oil to show you how to get the glue off, because I know that's a little bit sticky for everybody, but you wanna take the label off and the glue off. And if this part's not coming off, um, if I have a second at the end, I will, but right now I don't wanna run away from you guys. But you just put some canola oil or baby oil and you just take a tissue and you rub, and that actually just comes directly off, and I showed you that one before. So, to make the glass portion of this, <coughs> sorry guys, I have a little bit of cough today. Um, I already pre-cut it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Sorry guys. Okay. So and, you feel better. Oh, thank you. I'm not even sick. <laughs> it's like of course when I start the live, my throat just starts pause. Tickling. <laughs> Sorry guys. Hydration. Okay, so most soda bottles obviously have that like little bump line. So I just cut down to there. <laughs> oh my god, you guys. Sorry. And that way you don't have to like wonder if it's straight, you don't gotta seal it or like heat it up like other people do. Cause I've seen people make these before, but they've put them on the stove to like burn the edges to seal it up a little bit. Um, obviously I'm not gonna show you how to do that today. I'm not gonna take you inside and do that on the stove. Plus I honestly don't trust myself doing that cause I didn't even do that with that one and you can barely tell. So you're just gonna cut the bottom, <coughs> oh my God guys, sorry, of the soda bottle off. <coughs> Oh, so annoying, I'm sorry. And that's gonna be like the, that's essentially how it's gonna look. You're just gonna pop it right on there. And it should be even um, if you're following that line so you don't need to seal it if you don't. But it's uh, like personal preference. Now you're gonna take a little hand saw. I already cut through most of it or I should have cut through most of it. You're gonna saw right underneath, like right above the lip underneath the little plastic part. And we're just gonna saw that off. Where did you get your saw from? My saw, I just picked up at Orchard Supply. You can get it at any hardware store, though. Um, I just got the cheapest one. This was actually my first saw ever before I decided to invest into a power saw. So this guy has served me well for like a year and a half for all sorts of things. So now that we got this, your top is going to be detached. We have cut the bottom off. Ooh, get that bug off of you. What is going on? There's like, the world is ending right now in my garage, apparently. I'm coughing. Bugs are landing on Aaron. Um, okay, so from this, I just took a little piece of sandpaper and kind of smoothed out the edges just a little bit. <clears throat> but to ensure that it's a little bit glossy, because as you can see after you sand it down, some parts are a little rigid. Do not worry. We're going to cover that up with a little topper. Um, I've seen a lot of people use wood beads, and I don't like that. I want it to look like glass. So I had these ornaments in my garage from previous years of decorating. And what I'm going to do is just pull that top off. I'm pretty sure Paul's coming through the garage right now. So I apologize. Literally, the world is just being a mess right now. Oh, he's being sweet. He's not opening the garage. Okay, so you're just going to take the ornament top off. And then that's going to fit right in there. And that's going to make it look like a little glass vase. And then obviously we're going to clean this plastic up towards the end. It is a little bit dirty, but it is clear. So for this little like topper deal, I don't like how you can see the scratches on this guy. So I just grabbed some clear nail polish that I had. And I'm going to add it to the top to kind of seal it up. And you can't probably tell on the camera, but in person, it just makes it a little bit more shiny. It doesn't make it look like you just sanded it down. You can add a decent amount too, since it's clear, you just wanna polish it up a little bit. And I hope that your guys' Monday is going well. I just wanted to jump right into it because I know that you guys are a little impatient. Is there any comments? Oh, ah. 
No comments. I can't see the comments today, you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. I'm not too sure what's going on. No more comments. Oh, really? Is that mm -hmm. the bottom? Oh, there we go. Oh. oh, we're scrolling. Hold on. We're getting in business. What is that? F2FB. F2F. Anyways. Hey, babe. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to just glue this on with E6000. I know a lot of you guys just asked me where to get that. This fly is really attacking your face. <laughs> Sorry guys, there's a little fly attack happening here. Will you hold this? So sorry. There's just so much going on. It is just like intense. Okay. Ugh. Everyone's laughing at the fly. Oh, really? <laughs> sorry guys. All right. So now with the E6000, after you've just painted that, you don't need to wait for the nail polish to dry because we're going to just glue it anyways. Put some E6000 on the inside. Right. <laughs> oh my God. This fly just wants to be in the home talk live. We get it. You want attention. Get in there. Okay. Now, you put ESOC 6000 around the inside. Oh my God, this thing will not stop. And then you just rest it on there. But you do want to make sure that it rests uh, straight. Because if you look at it from a certain angle, it starts to look like it's tilting. So you want to like step back and make sure. I don't know. Does that look straight? Yeah, there we it go. It looks me. straight. All right. So you can also, like I said, seal the bottom. You can make this any type of color. But that's literally all it takes to make that little DIY cloche. Um, we can obviously clean this up in a little bit, but I do want to move on to the second portion of it, which is the Halloween aspect of it. Um, what I'm going to be doing is a play on Beauty and the Beast, if you will. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit spooky, but... Hi from New Zealand. <coughs> Hi, New Zealand. I'm in LA, and it's like, it like goes up 30 degrees every time I do it live in this garage. Um, so basically... What you want to do is get a fake rose. You can get this from the dollar store. I actually couldn't find any like smaller red roses from the dollar store, so I decided to buy one for two bucks um, at Michael's, which would fit just in this guy pretty well. Oops, I lifted that one. Italy. Oh, Italy. I really want to go to Italy. Okay, so now we're just going to measure where this rose can sit. And again, you don't have to do the inside decor like I'm doing. If you guys aren't interested, obviously you can just make the DIY cloche and decorate it any type of way that you want. So don't feel like I'm trying to pressure you over here and doing my DIY. But this just kind of fits my decor because I'm going to make two of these and I'm going to call it Till Death Do Us Part and then decorate our house with it. Um, and it's kind of cute in my opinion. So now you guys might recognize this, you might not. If you guys tuned in from my skull sconce, this was actually attached to the side of the face when I ripped it off and I told you guys I would be recycling it and here I am now recycling it. I actually know that the perfect length, you do not need this bone. So I'm gonna throw that away and I'm gonna pull that out. And what you're gonna need for this guy to make this hand stand up is a dowel that can fit right in there. This is bought at Michael's, it's super, super cheap. It's just like a craft dowel. And we're gonna cut that down to size. One thing that is totally optional as well with this decor in the middle of it is burning these fingers, like heating them up to bend them to kind of make it look like it's grabbing a rose. I can show you a little example. If you want to, let me know in the comments, but I won't like waste your time. But essentially, you just want the, the skeleton hand to kind of look like it's like grabbing the rose. And then we're going to add like a ring to it to make it look like, you know, they're married, um, even though this is the wrong hand. So I'll show you a little bit of that. Um, I love, 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 love this idea. Oh, yay. Okay, so for this guy, you guys, obviously, if you're underage, do not do this. Put a mask on so you're not breathing in the fumes. Or if you have a heat gun, go ahead and do that too. But to bend this down, I literally just lighted it up with a heat... Uh, lighted it up with a heater, heated it up with a lighter. And then I just kind of bent it. I didn't touch where it was hot. And I just bent it back until it molded to where I wanted it. And if I could have shown you guys this before, I would have. But it would have taken us like 20 minutes to mold this. So I didn't want to keep you guys there here for that long. Um, so this is just going to straighten it out a little bit. And I kind of want it to look like that. So I just kind of burnt it and bent it into that area. Um, oh, that scared me. person walking by. And then you just want to test where it's at with your rows, which is super, super simple. So you're just going to... Put it in it so there. Much. Yay! And then you're just gonna make sure it looks cute on this side. Again, you can make the fingers any which way you want to. You can use a different, like, mobile skeleton hand, but I decided just to reuse what I already had instead of spending more money when I don't need to. Where do you get your wedding ring from? Um, I have a couple of options, but I have one on my other one. These are ones that I just don't wear. So I decided, like, something that looks kind of, like, cocktail-y and, like, bougie. doesn't necessarily <laughs> have to be, like, a wedding ring. But if you have cocktail rings or you know where to get them, feel free to send that my way. Because I looked at Party City, but they all just looked really cheap. I am going to make sure this is going on. 
Oh, Someone there. called it Gothic Beauty and the Beast. Oh, I'm like sweating right now. Sorry, you guys. Okay, so, oh yeah, someone actually, I have a YouTube tutorial with all the full instructions if you guys want to check it out. But yeah, someone actually commented that a couple of times. Really? <laughs> now, I don't want to bore you guys. I know the skull sconce that I did for you guys um, made you like, it was a little bit too much uh, painting. So what I did is I just took my Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Cover Paint and Primer Flat White. I just sprayed that white on my other one. I'm going to show you. I don't want to do this here because I know that you guys get a little feisty. So um, basically, I just spray painted that white. On my tutorial, it shows you how to detail it with just some water and gray and black paint. Super, super simple. If you guys watched my last live, um, I just detailed that for you. And you're going to need a little foam brush like this and then like a little eyeshadow brush kind of dealio is what it kind of reminds me of um, but again I'm not gonna do that for you because I know it takes up a little bit too much of your guys's time so moving on since we have both of these pieces like pre done for you and the rose is gonna like sit right there you want to take this center piece and again this is totally optional you can glue the dowel um, but because I don't necessarily want to glue the dowel I'm gonna actually just drill it into it because anything that I'm using in this cloche is going to cover the middle of it. So for this part, just taking my measuring tape, I know this is six inches wide up here. So we're just going to go obviously like at three. And then I always think that I'm a little bit more right than the measurement. So I ended up, I end up just putting my finger somewhere and drilling. You always have really cute <clears throat> ideas. Thanks guys. So now you want to use your drill and then we're just going to drill. And don't worry if the wood gets a little messed up, we can re-stain it. And then I'm gonna just knock this off to the side. I will clean that up later. And then I will stain this as well. So don't all my people that are all about detail orientation, like oriented people. Um, your dowel should fit right into it. So this is, I think, a three, I forget what kind of drill but it is but this is literally what I do every kind of, every time I do a DIY I'm like do I have the drill bit that fits so you want to make sure that it's a little bit bigger so you can shimmy that guy in there you can wood glue him if you want to I personally do not want to do that um, but I do want to know where I need to cut it so that's the mount that goes into the middle of the piece of wood so I'll put my thumb down there and then I'm just gonna cut it with my little hand saw which some said well, do you recommend doing this without the hands yeah yeah you this is a two for one you guys if you want to put you know a bunch of spiders or a skull or something that's already a decoration in there go for it this is just an option to show you guys because i've seen these on pinterest oh no another fly fly attack um i've seen these on pinterest so many times and I just really wanted to see if I could create it for less because they were selling on there for i don't even know how much it was way too much um while my glue gun heats up Oh no, someone says they have no sound. Oh no! Uh, uh, it should be on there. It's on there. It's on. All right, guys. Sorry, we're having technical difficulties, possibly. Um, why don't you guys ask me some questions while I just stain the middle of this? That way I could do this through and through. <laughs> Everybody's shaming that guy. I have sound. <clears throat> oh, really? Oh my gosh. Okay. So, really quick, I'm just going to paint the inside of that. Uh, oh, they wanted to know, can you do a, um, a tutorial about your shelves? My shell, I, I actually have a collaboration coming out soon. I need to film it still. It's going to be with the girls of Kate. Oh gosh, I'm going to get a stain everywhere. Uh, it's called, they're called Chasing Unicorns. They're like a bath bomb company. So we have a little collaboration in the works to make three different types of um, triangle shelving. So yes, I will do a tutorial on that for you soon. So. Someone just tuned in. What are we making? Okay, we're making a DIY cloche out of a soda bottle and a piece of wood. This is what it looks like. It's not obviously the super fanciest one, but this is just for a cheap alternative. Um, I'm doing this particular one for home decor, or I mean for Halloween decor, not home decor. But you can leave it blank and put, you know, just the rose in there if you wanted to. It's kind of up to you. But anyways, so now that we stain the inside of that, I just did that so when I decide to use it for other things, I don't need to worry about that like whiter wood coming through that lighter wood. So I'm just going in there all the way to the bottom. Where did you get your wire cutters? My wire cutters I stole from my aunt when I was decorating a house last year because I like them so much. And she's been looking for them ever since. Sorry, Laura, they're in my garage. I didn't have the heart to tell her, I just loved them. But I think these are from the dollar store and then I spray painted them gold. Cause they're green and a lot of the things that come from the dollar store that I have are always green or orange in my opinion. Um, okay, so now that we got that and my glue gun is heating up, 
you want to secure the dowel in the hand. And I know that sounds weird, but you don't want to secure it to here because if you want to reuse this cloche, this thing's going to be glued in it and you're going to have to use a little baby weird dowel. So we're not going to do that. So I'm just going to hook them in there like that. <clears throat> you see the fly? He's trying to be the center of attention. Did you see that? He just popped in. Sorry, guys. That's the one that's been attacking us. They look like pruning shears. Oh, I don't know. You guys, you know, you guys, this fly, get out of my, my like area. You're stinky. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm not good with shears, metal shears, the difference between all of them. I just know that this cuts through this kind of wire, which I do love. So I, I don't really hello know. from Guam. Oh, hello. Okay. So now that we have the hot glue on the end of this dowel to secure the hand, you just want to push it up in there. Pink. And you want to leave a little extra out that um, the portion that goes all the way down because this is how you're going to be able to just take it in and out. So this is the little hand dealio. Shoe fly, that was so cute. <laughs> I know, this fly, it's like seriously everywhere. It's so annoying. All right, so now that we got that, obviously the stain is still wet, but I love you guys, so I'm just going to, you know, um, place it in while it's still wet. And that's going to shimmy on down, and it should be able to connect to the base of it. So now you see it's like... Almost flush, but not flush, but you still got hot glue, so you can still push it like that because it's still drying. <laughs> All right. Now that we got this portion done, I know the people that are just tuning in, you're going to see these like burnt fingers. That is because I heated them up and molded them to how I wanted them. But again, I'm going to show you a final, final, final product with it all painted. I'm going to break it down for you guys so you can see it. I just don't want to keep you guys here for forever. So with that being said, I'm going to make this um a more masculine hand and just put just a simple band that i have on or that i had in my closet on this guy and we're just gonna put them on the finger i know this is in the wedding hand i'm not good with that my boyfriend actually pointed out to me like that's not the right hand and i'm the one that's supposed to be wanting to get engaged i don't even know what hand it's supposed to be i almost burnt you with that glue gun i'm so sorry now <clears throat> i just put the rose where i want it and I do secure it to the bottom with one dab of hot glue, but that's all I used to secure it. So I didn't want you to be able to see that like it was being held. I kind of wanted it to like look like it was floating on top of the hand, like very natural and, and just effortless. This guy is like crooked. I told you not to put it on crooked and I put it on crooked. All right, so I'm gonna hold it there because this Ryobi wireless glue gun that you guys all love, this glue stays hot for so long, so you do have to hold it just a little bit, a little bit longer. Um, and those, for, for you guys that are just tuning in, um, a trick to get this dust fly out of my garage, that's what I'm gonna need. Um, but for this guy, I know that you can see the glue right here, but just take canola oil or baby oil or vegetable oil, whatever, put it right on the glue, take a tissue, Rub it and it comes off like it ain't no thing, I promise you. So now that we got all of this done, this is what this guy should look like so far. And he has just like a simple little wedding band on. Let me grab the second one for you guys. Or actually, I can move it over so you can see it. And now we're gonna put these guys together because one is like a more feminine hand, one is a more masculine hand. I mean, it doesn't have to have genders. Hello guys, 2017. But just that's what my whole play is like. This is something my boyfriend would wear. That's probably something I would wear. That's kind of what I wanted it to be. And now you're just gonna make sure all the leaves fit. This is dirty, I apologize, but I'm not gonna take you inside my house and go to my sink. <laughs> but I am gonna clean it up. So now at the end of it, you have these little DIY cloches and they have like a little spooky Halloween twist. And I don't know if you can tell if we get a close up if I open these up for you guys, um, but you can tell, or maybe, hopefully, this one is, no, this one's not painted. So you can see the browns like of the dollar store. It's like very brown, it's not black and white. And I wanted this one to have like a more grayish tone to it. So you can see I spray painted it white and I just like, dialed it down with some gray and some water and I show that whole detailing process on my last um, home talk post on the school scone situation uh, but if you like it as is if that doesn't bother you I like that this looks a little bit more bony and like matte and flat it's not shiny and looks like you, it's store-bought kind of in my opinion I mean let's be real the fake rose gives it away but I'm trying to make it look as realistic as possible on a budget so now you guys I don't know how fast that was. I didn't realize I prepped so well for this. But um, that is all I have for you today. And this is what I like to call till death do us part Halloween decor. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Um, does anyone have any questions before we head out? I just want to make sure I'm getting everybody's 
Someone said that I'm a bad filmographer. Oh, well, she had a fly attacking her face, her arms, her... Yeah, don't. It's... I'm sorry, guys. I apologize. There was just, like, a bunch of bugs in here for whatever, whatever reason. Any questions that I can, like, answer for you guys on this craft that maybe I didn't through this whole tutorial process? It looks like real glass. This is awesome. Yeah, okay, so this one's dirty, obviously, but this one is clean, and, like, I, in my opinion, it looks... Like you can just like put cookies underneath there mm -hmm. or you can, you know, when it's not Halloween season, you can add like a little They're asking succulent. They're buy the glass, but it's not glass. Oh, you guys, this isn't glass. Okay, real quick before I head out. This is not glass. This is a dollar store soda bottle. So I will just walk you through it. I don't have, okay, we'll just use this as an example. All right, say it's this guy. You're just going to take off the label. And then what I did is I just took this handsaw, because this is full, I'm not going to do it. But you're just going to cut the top of this off where that lid is. And then you're just going to cut the bottom off in a straight line, whatever works for you guys. On these soda bottles, though, there is like a line where the label ends. So I just kind of follow that because I know that's going to be level and straight. I don't got to like heat it up and level it out. And then you're going to add an ornament. This is just a glass ornament that I took the metal off of and then I E6000'd it upside down into the soda bottle if you can see that and then yeah so this is not this isn't glass this is plastic what so it's mini see? human friendly if someone runs by like like my mini human in this household if she runs by and knocks it over i'm not gonna worry because none of this is glass i'm not gonna stress out about it which is so great are you gonna leave this up until christmas because <clears throat> it's really pretty a hundred percent yeah if not it's gonna permanently live in my bedroom after this like on each of our nightstands mm -hmm. my hand on his side and his hand on my side so we have a good reminder <laughs> Um, any other questions I can answer for you guys before I head out? Are those two liter or three liter bottles? Mm. <laughs> I think they're two liter. They were just the ones at the dollar store. So I just went to the dollar store, went to the soda pop section, and then I just picked a clear bottle, whatever had a clear bottle. Because obviously, if you get like one of the green bottles, that might be a little bit more spooky, but you not you might not be able to see through it. So. Oh, where did you get your t-shirt from? This t-shirt is from three people, but it's like three years ago they might still have it it's a great one they're coming out with new bands but i don't think they got the nirvana anymore sorry guys and one last question okay where did you get your base from the which one ba base oh the base okay so this you guys is just a wood circle from michael's it's an eight inch round um you can see underneath that it, it's just like the i don't know if i could oh yeah it's glued on i made this i know that um okay so the bottom is just the raw wood i just stained it to be a little bit darker and the stain that i use is like a dark walnut stain you can kind of look for that color in any kind of stain they typically have it um but you can paint it embellish it like with gold you can even if you really wanted to like take like a rhinestone ribbon because i know that a lot um i have a lot of women in my life that love the glitz and the glam on decor and they end up always adding rhinestones to stuff so you can always do that as well pardon me um but yeah this is just an eight inch round from michael's with my 40 percent off coupon so i think it came out to be like three dollars all said and done and then this was a dollar i had the ornament this is a skeleton hand that i recycled these roses I had to buy. So all in all, I'm gonna say this whole entire DIY for both of them were under $15 total. So instead of buying a $15 glass cloche that I, I always end up breaking, I have one and I broke it. So uh, I was How like, let's do it. Glue gun? glue gun. This one is from Home Depot and it's $30 total after you buy the battery base because it's wireless. So you have to buy like the charger for it and the battery. And then it just pops right in like any other power tool. If you have any other Ryobi power tools, that are wireless you don't have to buy this you just have to buy this and this is i believe 20 bucks it is the best investment for a crafter you guys i don't use any other glue gun i do wish that they would give me my own so i can make it like a gold glue gun because the green is a little bit intense in my opinion everybody wants to add lights lights fairy lights yeah i have some they're inside but that would be really pretty but i do have fairy lights like i said you don't have to decorate the way i did that's the best part. When you go to my home talk post and you see everything all in all at the bottom, what I would love for you to do if you're watching this live right now, leave what you would decorate the inside with. Because I'm very curious. I know this is a, like very unique. But I just want to know what, what Halloween decor you guys would put it in. Just, just out of my own curiosity. But that's all I have for you unless there's any more questions that I can walk you through. I didn't realize how quick that was going to be, but it's literally that quick of a DIY. What's your website? My website is um, youtube.com slash living to DIY with Rachel Metz. It's really long and wordy. Hopefully it's somewhere in the comments for you to just click on it. Or you can Google my name or YouTube my name, Rachel Metz, and my channel will pop up. The full tutorial is there, but it's also on Home Talk, which is probably linked below, I'm hoping for you guys as well. 
Any other questions? Are we good? Are you sure? Any last minute questions for you, honey? How, how do you feel about a black rose? Black rose. I was going to do a black rose, but I wanted, um, I'm using the coffee, this stuff. I, I forget what this is called. But this black stuff is going to be all over my front entryway. I'm going to make it like a hotel with all of this. So I wanted like one pop of color to catch people's eye. And I just thought that the red was so beautiful with our interior colors. Okay, spider webs. <laughs> this is like the bad part about Halloween decor. It's like this, it reminds me of glitter. It just stays with you everywhere. But yeah, so black roses work. It's totally personal preference. That's the best part about DIYing, you guys. It is all up to you. I'm just giving you a base to work with, and then you guys can get crazy for what works for your space. But I hope you guys really enjoyed this one. This is probably one of my favorites. I'll give you a sneak peek on what I'm working on. That's a pumpkin tree. So if you guys want to see that live, I can make one for you. This is just a work in progress, but let me know. I just wanted to get you excited for more Halloween stuff. Um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your Monday. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And like I said, comment down below on the link in the home talk tutorial what you would put on the inside. I'm just very curious. Have a great one, you guys. Bye.